Let's go! There's a shift happening right now in traditional finance and the question is, we all know that DeFi is going to be big, but the question is, which platform is going to be the go-to platform? Is it going to be Ethereum, which is the biggest platform today? Is Ethereum going to be absorbing much of what traditional finance is today? Or is it going to be any other platform? Is it going to be Polkadot? Is it going to be Cardano? Is it perhaps going to be Cosmos? Well, that is what we are going to be talking about today, guys. But if you have been paying attention to the news or watching my recent videos, then you know that there's a major shift occurring in the world of traditional finance. If you have not heard, brokerages such as Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, and several others all restricted retail investors' ability to trade specific stocks because they were causing hedge funds to lose a lot of money on their short positions. Not only was trading restricted, but on Robinhood, some investors even had their positions closed against their will after receiving a message that it was to protect them from volatility. This is completely unfair, and it gets even worse. It is being uncovered that there were multiple conflicts of interest because some of the hedge funds losing money had connections to another company with ties to Robinhood, so there was some insider dealings going on there. All of these events are being covered in great detail on national and even international news. Basically, what all of this means is that the inner workings of Wall Street are being revealed to the public and nobody is liking what they are seeing. People are finally realizing that the stock markets are heavily influenced by hedge funds and other extremely wealthy groups and individuals. And they all do everything they can to skew the odds in their favor, of course. As soon as things started going against those wealthy entities, they started calling in favors and they started pulling strings to push things back the way they wanted. For example, soon afterwards started spreading on major news sources that the Reddit group Wall Street Bets was responsible for the pumps in GameStop, Nokia, AMC and the other stocks going to the moon, the Discord group associated with Wall Street Bets was rapidly shut down and the Reddit group itself had to close temporarily as well. So how is this for a free market? As I mentioned already, investors were blocked from buying the specific stocks, but selling was allowed to continue and that can only push the price in one direction, you know this. This was all done in an attempt to crash the price of these stocks back down and protect the shorts of the hedge funds. An SEC investigation was also declared and the Senate and House of Representatives both held emergency meetings to discuss the events occurring. All of this simply goes to show that retail investors can be easily blocked from accessing their investments and even the stock market in general. This has of course caused an outrage not only among investors who lost money or missed out on potential gains, but also among anyone who believes that individuals should have access to investments that they made with their hard earned money. So this was basically skewing everything towards the retail people losing money and the wealthy people making money. This outrage has led to many discussions, both public and private, about how this major issue should be addressed. Of course, there's an obvious solution that a lot of you are probably already thinking about and that is decentralized finance. If we take a look at Google search analytics, we can actually see that searches for decentralized finance have spiked hard over the last week, which means that there are a lot of people interested in learning more about DeFi and how it works. As new people research DeFi, they will almost certainly be led to Ethereum, as it is the most widely used and developed base layer protocol for DeFi right now. But as interest in DeFi grows, it is very likely that it will see an increase in users as well. However, the big question at hand is where those users will go. Ethereum is the DeFi king right now, but Cardano and Polkadot are both close to being functional smart contract platforms and other blockchains such as NEO, Cosmos and EOS can already support smart contracts. With Ethereum transaction costs being a significant barrier to entry for users with smaller amounts of capital to invest, it is likely that many new and existing users will be looking to other platforms for the decentralized finance needs. So what does that mean? Does it mean that Ethereum is going to crash to zero? Does it mean that people are not going to be building on Ethereum? Well, not really, because yes, at first glance, that does not sound too good for the future of Ethereum, but in reality, 
It does not really even matter whether other smart contract platforms take off during this new DeFi run. Let me explain why. Ethereum has multiple advantages over a lot of the other platforms, but perhaps the most important advantage is that it has been around longer than any of the others. This is a very simple fact, and perhaps it should not be as big of a deal as it is, but reality is, in pretty much every area of life, things that have been around for a long time tend to be favored over those that have not. In the case of Ethereum, it means even more than usual. Smart contracts and decentralized finance in general can become extremely complicated for users, but even more so for developers. Coding can be difficult to learn in general, but coding blockchain applications can be on an entirely new level of difficulty. To create a simple dApp that end users can actually utilize, the developer must code smart contracts, a front-end interface, and use Web3 and Node.js or other similar tools to allow users on a website to connect to the smart contract. Any error in any of those parts can lead to a fatal flaw that can lead to an exploit. So why does this matter? Out of all of the smart contract blockchains out there, developers have been learning and working on Ethereum for the longest. This is a very important factor when developers decide which platform to work with and any platform outside of Ethereum knows that they need to address this in some way to draw developers to them. This is why it does not matter whether or not those platforms take off. They will almost certainly have to implement some form of compatibility with Ethereum in order to grow the number of teams that choose to develop on their platform. And there are already multiple examples of projects doing this. For example, Cosmos utilized Ethermint to enable Ethereum implementation. Ethermint gives developers the full capabilities of writing and executing smart contracts in Ethereum plus all the added performance benefits powered by Tendermint's consensus engine. So what does this mean? Well, basically, it means that things become very easy for the developers to develop on Cosmos. Another important example is Polkadot. The founder of Polkadot, Gavin Wood, wrote, Ever since the release of the Polkadot paper three years ago, we knew that bridging with the Ethereum ecosystem to help expand capabilities on either side would be one of the key points of the network. This shows that he understands what I mentioned earlier about the necessity to integrate Ethereum in order to succeed as a new platform, even when the platform has much hype around it, just like Polkadot has. This is why a public Ethereum and Polkadot bridge that works in both directions has been a major focus during Polkadot development. Finally, one more example is Cardano. Cardano is still working on implementing smart contracts to their own network, but they are already also working towards Ethereum compatibility even though the founder of Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, was a former co-founder of Ethereum but left because he disagreed with the project's direction. Regardless of previous disagreements, Cardano has launched the KEVM testnet, which supports full backwards compatibility with Ethereum. That means that programs written in Solidity or EVM bytecode will be able to be run in the Cardano network. So that's absolutely fantastic. In the end, this is just all evidence that Ethereum will thrive no matter what platforms take off during this DeFi boom. No matter if Polkadot takes off, no matter if Cardano takes off, it's still going to be there and it's still going to be very important. There will certainly continue to be rapid development of DeFi directly on Ethereum, but as I have shown, the growth of any other chains will benefit Ethereum as well. This is part of what makes Ethereum an extremely attractive asset to own right now. And of course, we cannot forget that Ethereum 2.0 is still working towards actually being implemented. And once that actually is put in place, Ethereum will hopefully become much closer to chains such as Cardano in terms of transaction cost, speed, and throughput, as those characteristics are pretty much the only drawbacks to Ethereum right now. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like videos like these, make sure to subscribe right now, watch the video popping up in the middle of this video, and I will see you right there.